another way of doing this, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just separate some of those bristles there, even though this is wet on wet. Just dab a little bit of white in it. And you can see with that, it creates a different texture. Oh, that's nice. Now at this point, I'm gonna come back in. I wanna bring some magenta into play here too. So I'm working with cool colors, which I've already done right here, against some of the warmer colors. Let's see what happens when I add a little bit of yellow to that magenta. A little bit of white on the tips there. And again, you can see I'm actually dabbing it. You can hear the canvas here, so you know that I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it. Now up at the top where it's receiving more light from the surface of the water, I'm going to use a lot of white, just a little bit of pigment. And so it looks like it's receiving a lot more light up towards the top. And again, because this is so heavily textured, I want to put a lot of pressure so it's covering up all that background color. And again, down here, you can see I've used a warm color. Then I'm coming back in with a contrasting color, that being magenta. I want it to go down in value as it goes down towards the bottom of the sea. So I'm bringing in some of that burgundy to tone it down. And then always knowing that because it's underwater, I can always bring some of that original color that being the Southern Ocean Blue into play. And over here we can come in with a real hot spot. So I'm using a lot of white, just a little bit of yellow. Let's see if I can try a different technique here. So I'm going to really push that brush all the way down on the palette paper. So I want some of those bristles just to go wild. And you can see when you look at the brush, it's got an uneven edge there. Well, I'll use that to my advantage and see how this can go. Leave some of that blue space coming through. A little bit more active. So at this point I take a look at it and I see if there's enough contrast here. For example, on this green area where it blends in there, that might not be enough contrast. So there are a couple of things that I could do. I can come back in and lighten up the edge of that green by adding yellow to it or a warmer green. And you can see how that'll make it stand out. Or I could go in the reverse of it and let it go real dark back behind it by using some of the hooker's green and thalo green. And you can see that that will help to make that edge stand out that much more. 
See the contrast that we've developed right there? That just adds a lot more depth and variety. This is kind of plain up here, so I might want to break that up. And I'll do the same thing up there by bringing in some of the hooker's green, a little bit of thalo blue, a little bit of that southern ocean blue, and I'm just going to create a nice little ridge there. And then by barely touching it, I'm going to let it feather out into that coral that's up above it. Now oh, that's much better. A lot more variety and depth there. I have the same issue right over here where I feel like when I squint my eyes, and that's always one way of checking to see whether you have enough contrast. If I squint my eyes and I take a look at that one surface there, if this area blends into that, then I might want to separate it a little bit so there's more definition. And I'm going to do that by coming back in with darker value right underneath it and letting that feather out into that magenta. Okay.